Hello, everybody! Welcome to the penultimate round of the Limit Lows Qualifier International number three. I'm joined here today by Martin, and once again, we already we already heard it. But how are you doing? Yeah, still doing great. Uh, you know, the last two rounds, it's getting down to the wire as always. People fighting for those last spots remaining in the day two, and um, yeah, I think. Um, we have uh, quite quite an interesting player that has uh, a lot of eyes on him um, right now on stream. Um, yeah, then that is. You tell yeah, it, man. Is, yeah, I tell it. It's uh, Ross Corton who has been performing. He's He's been absolutely stomping those qualifiers, yeah. those last ones. Um, he's like, I believe, he's uh, first. one of the top first. spots yeah, in the race for the Invitational, so absolutely crazy. And he's an, at an impressive 9-2 um, and two record right now, so Indeed. yeah, Indeed. looking great and probably will be able to make it into the next qualifier as well, with just one win right here. Indeed, he showed the power of his uh, 8P Spirit Tomb already in the past, and he brought it again this time, because, you know, when something works, why would you change it? Yeah, well, what they say, never change a running system, right? He's the expert Indeed. of the stack. He knows all the ins and outs. And, um, yeah, that's why he has been performing so well with it. And um, right here we see, I think he's playing against uh, Baby. Super Muslim. scoop Hello. up, yeah. He wants yeah. to, oh, there we go. Fight yeah, the really ADP, like play. right? Yeah, he is looking for this ADP board on the street. That doesn't matter. He needs to get his ADP out on turn one. That's the uh, uh, any ADP deck needs to do this. Another super scoop up, but this time we will not be able to retreat. So yeah, can't go <laughs> again. Force, so already losing a turn right here. Um, oh yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate. But you can maybe uh, like. Yeah, you might, you might as well attach the energy right now, I think. Yeah, um, it and is And then you fair. can maybe snack a knockout on the following turns. Um, like, where you are still setting up, and then you can just go for a knockout, maybe. Exactly, exactly. And Ross is once again playing this um, super consistent um, game. He's already has those four Spiritum, four Jirachi, four Acrobike. A lot of things to just do what he wants, just try to get the GX in turn 1, unfortunately here he was not able, sorry in turn 2, he was not able to do it, pretty unfortunate for him. Then against uh, Matthew, which we already had on um, on streaming, and he's playing that baby Blasephalon deck. How do you think these two decks fare against each other? Um, yeah, I saw a little bit of that matchup earlier today, and it all comes down to, um, <laughs> ironically, the ADP player not missing a beat. Um, because then you are usually able to close out the um, close out the game if your ADP gets the GX attack off after two turns, and you're usually fine. And I feel like overall that is a good that it is a good matchup, and you are. I would think that you are favored because you have the option to put your ADP at 310 hit points with the Jinx and the Giant. I, I tested it as well. The, the main thing, as you say, is you don't need to skip a beat uh, with ADP deck. Uh, it's very what would really changes is if they're able to knock out your ADP before you're able to take a knockout with it. So if you're just able to, I don't know, GX with it, then it's gonna be pretty hard for you to, stop, especially if they have that Beast Bringer that's just gonna spell doom for you. There we go. Yeah. That's the welder. Sometimes even then it can be fine, but um, yeah, yeah, I definitely. think if you you I think you don't count on your like if you go into that match you don't count on your ADP getting an ultimate ray off. I think you your game plan is like what you can expect realistically is it getting off the altered creation GX, and if you get off the ultimate ray then that's a bonus, and I think if you do that then the game is already won almost. So yeah, exactly. um, you would expect to ADP to maybe survive one turn. But right here we see the Babel Cephalon player Matthew coming out swinging, right? Knocking out the Jirachi already. And Ross is down to only one lone spirit tomb, probably being forced to yeah, just research this hand away and then go search uh, yeah. on ADP. As well, this, uh, the spirit tomb already has a tool attached to it. It means there will not be any um, Hasselbell shenanigans this turn. There probably not be a response knockout. 
Um, this plus F1 would need uh, I uh, three more counters to knock out a BB Blaster. I think it can only pile up two now. If um, he finds another Spirit Tomb, then maybe he can do it. It does have a Quick Fall. Yeah, but the Quick Fall probably needs to get the ADP right here because you have the energy in hand. Maybe you can, yeah, you can go, you can, um, you would need out, another yeah. Spirit Tomb for sure to get the knockout right here, so. At the same Let's time, see. that would it's invest a... another energy on the Spirit Tomb that already has one. I mean, you so... can, you can uh, just attach the Rainbow to the ADP, right, and move that damage off, and mm -hmm. then. Uh, yeah, that's true, that's true. But and then you go then you go for building spite, but then still you are at like yeah, you have three damage the rainbow. counter. The, you need to touch the rainbow to the active. There's no way around yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, and that would be really wasteful, I think. So, I think uh, Ross is not going for for uh, for knockout right here and just playing defensively. I think maybe getting getting a jirachi yeah getting a jirachi and retreating into it should be fine or even getting another spirit tomb and retreating into it could be fine or even retreating into the if you want to play a little bit risky you can retreat into the adp let's see play. how it goes for here because uh i think that the seven has a lucky egg attached to it i'm not sure yeah. um yeah. so obviously taking the knockout here there are many factors that you need to consider especially considering you know you have a 30 hp pokemon Let's see uh, actually 20 hp pokemon take a knockout with the spirit home so you need to consider uh, how the game plan uh, will look like for you and considering it's a uh, lacephalon matchup i think yeah. you want to go for the longer game yeah i agree with that um going for the money here uh oh, like going for the money on the next turn i'm very sorry um will hopefully be like it will be able to buy ross a little bit of time um yeah, I think you can go into the ADP here to just and um, yeah. Now it comes. Uh, it down is to, a bit risky. Mm. Now it comes down to can your ADP survive, right? But if um, y you give yourself the best chance um, to win the game because if the ADP survives, you're in a pretty fine spot. But yeah, if it doesn't, you lose instantly. But I think that's a risk you have to take if yeah. you want to win the game. And thank you, PTCGO, for telling us that we forgot to attack. That's what we want to do. So there is a switch. I mean, if the ADP would have a giant charm attached, then it would be really fine because that one energy. Yeah, that would have been extra safe. But uh, like 280 is a little bit scary because Blasphemon can just sometimes go for that, and then you lose the game on the spot. But there's there a way there. Okay, so just, just looking to draw. to draw some extra cards probably. Yep. What he goes for here, because. If he's able to set up another Blasphemon, then it becomes harder and harder for Ross to respond. But if he doesn't, I'm pretty sure Ross can, uh, I mean, will have tools to deal with this. The ADP, obviously, is the threat right now, and knocking it out would grant Matthew probably the win, I would say. Yeah, um, there's a dead edge. Right? He just wants to go for it. I do like this. I yeah, if you, you, if you have the opportunity, right, to win the game, just win the game instantly, I think you always go for it, especially with a deck that is able to extend, um, like a baby Blacephalon, so... Exactly. I like this as well, It's uh, it seems good, because worst case scenario, j just maybe hit the ADP 400 or something, and then... It does have the Lucky Egg too, so even more props to that, yeah. but there's a Fiery Flame, that's gonna mean four more energies. Yeah, if there's does have any other recursion. Yeah, if there's a fire crystal or retrieval, that would be would be really really devastating for Ross. Mm -hmm. So let's see what he. Um, yeah, the fire flint here uh, even discards another fire flint and a blessed and I think it's just betting all on this. Yeah. Topic, but only three energies gets fetched up. Is there a fire crystal in Matthew's end? Or enough energy is ready to knock I mean, out. if you if you just pitch the Blasphemon and the Fiery Flint, I would assume that there are enough enough energy to take the knockout, right? Mm -hmm. But I believe there are like nine, twelve, so two are priced. Um, oh. Because there are four on board, five in the discard, uh, three in hand, and um, so yeah, yeah you basically we saw, we saw the energy need... count go down a bit. Yeah, yeah, that? the energy count went down. Uh, a little bit at least and so it makes it a little bit harder to find all of those energy but there's a scoop net putting the Great. jirachi into the hand but 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he can reuse it now. Probably there's another switch. Um, in his, Obviously, in his, the scoop net makes you discard every card that is attached. Yeah. Um, but luckily, they <laughs> they didn't make it that it picks up everything. I thought that would have been even stronger. It's not like Ace Roller on an item without damage. No, no. <laughs> yeah, at least uh, it just cuts it. Uh, but... Just nope. a pass. Hmm. Do you think he forgot about the discard from the scoop of net, or just this, uh, just, he didn't have the knockout? I think you just go like if you don't have the knockout. Uh, I think he he didn't have it um, because there were. Uh, I if you throw away the fire uh, fire flint, I would assume that the last energies are priced. So yeah. that way you don't. There's there's probably Matthew had no other way to extend further and get the energies into his hand and retreat. So I guess um, just going for another stellar wish right there is. Um, is fine to maybe set up for the next turn so that you guarantee the knockout on the following turn. But now you put yourself in a position where setting you setting up play. also these massive spirit homes, building spite, gorging hatred. All the turns, the spirit home get more and more damage on them, and as well, thanks to the shrine, you'll be able to even generate damage every turn. Yeah, there's no, the Matthew, ADP. Matthew, you you know, like he used the fire crystal and he threw away another one. So there are three energies in his deck, but his uh, Matthew's way to access them are uh, really like he, yeah, he, he out. threw he threw them he threw them away. Right, kind of the fiery flints are in the discard fire, so it's going to be hard to get the energies out of the deck. Yeah, but Cephalon is a deceptively resourceful deck. It looks like it has many many resources, many many answers. But in the end, when you are not able to line up your early game uh, too well, that comes back to bite in the late game. Because it's a deck that, for example, I don't think the... He doesn't play the Victini Prism. Um, so that was just kind of the saving grace uh, before now. But people don't play it anymore, so you need to be very careful with the cards that you play out throughout the game. Yeah, you need to be careful. Also, what you discard off Fiery Flints, for example, it could be really important. Um, mm -hmm. Because you have so many recovery cards that you want to use to your full effect, but sometimes um, it can be it can be tough to like uh, yeah, tricky, yes. them in the right way. But the Zation hitting the discard pile is certainly something you would like to see. Now it just needs a way to retreat and may and, and another fire crystal or like a fire crystal um, to to take the knockout right here with the six. Oh, there is a welder. Oof. Yikes. He also needs a way to retreat this Jirachi. Yeah, desperately looking for those energy recovery cards. <laughs> if he whiffs this turn as well, it's not a good sign. There's a scoop of net as well. I think if you whiff here, then it's just game over. No, oh, there's another Jirachi being put into the active. That's not good either. Probably a sign that he uh, doesn't have the uh, cards to do this right now. Let's see if he draws it through the Stellar Wish. Yeah. Really he's to also, find this fire crystal. In, in that case, he's in, a, he's in a pretty good spot, right? Yeah, there's a fire crystal, but the um, question is whether they are switching cards left. Because a lot of scoop up nets have been used already. Yep. Um, so another and, uh, and the skateboard is also in the discard pile. Because it got discarded off the scoop up net earlier. Yep. So yeah. yeah, if Ross gets off the ultimate ray, oh, that's just a pass. So yep. Um, oh no. I always feel like this is the point where it's game over. Um, yep. I the, think so as well. For baby bliss, if you get off the um, the ultimate ray versus them, and even exactly, like exactly. this way, you can't even take two prizes on a Zation, for example. Mm -hmm. um, as I, as I you... said before, if you're able to do the ultimate to attack with. ADP yeah. before they are able to knock it out. It's good. Right now, he cannot even use the um, Beastbringer. He was even discarded. But look at that. Also, Matthew has just eight cards in, left in the deck, seven in hand. It's not looking great, to be honest. And yeah, Ross as well he has 24 cards in the deck, still has two boss orders. He can line up knockout perfectly throughout the game. Yep. Um, also, also, remember, there's okay, this then. alternate creation. Ground. This means that every turn is going to be one extra prize for Ross. 
Yeah, that's just what's great about the ADP, right? You, if you're able to live through through those early turns, you just can you can capitalize on that uh, so well. And Spiritum especially good at that, pushing the damage to new absurd numbers um, with just a single energy attachment. Um, you would have thought that like um, maybe would Spiritum um, with its low HP would maybe struggle a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, it hits Dragapult for weakness, so it must be at least um, has have it has a lot of value in this new format. I think if you're able so, to deal with those like hyped hyped up cards in just one hit. So yeah, Front of Punishment as well piling up this damage. It's actually a really good spot here. Um, the damage that is left on this ADP will actually mean that if the Bacephalon uh, knocks it, it, just needs five energies instead of uh, six to knock it out, because it will be knocked out by the shrine that Ross himself put into play. Um, so it's not over yet, just um, Matthew will need at least two turns to win. Yeah, I mean, the, his only hope is that if Ross whiffs the energy, right? Because yep. now, if you do take the knockout now, then you get knocked out back for sure, and then yep. you hope that Ross doesn't have an energy, but I don't know if Matthew plays any hand disruption. No, I'm checking his list right now. I don't think there's anything. No. Not even a one-off. So it's going to be pretty hard right now for Matt to come back. Because we know there's an Aurora energy already in Ross's hand. Which is going to mean that next turn just attaches to the Spirit Tomb. Says, whatever man, your turn. And there's no other Pokemon in Matt's hand that is able to, to keep up with the damage. Yeah, I don't but think... It... You can, yeah, you can't... There's, there's like no option to... Spread yeah. some damage around or snipe them. I think it's just around. downhill from now. Yeah. Um, there's the Oricore going to the hand, but not being benched. There, there, there yeah, it comes. Now down. it is. Now it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, course. definitely. If it's this card there, left it's in bad. deck. There's no surprise attacker, so he just plays the Cramorant V, which I think was already discarded. Um, yeah, this boss Cephalos, I don't think they will be able to fare up uh, the, the Spirit Tomb. Actually, the ADP Spirit Tomb, thanks to the turns that the Blacephalon was not able to capitalize on. Um, yeah. uh, actually, in the end, uh, probably will win. Obviously, uh, the game is still open, but it looks like right now there's not much that can be done. Yeah, there's a Fireball Circus, uh, 250. ADP will be knocked out by Shrine of Punishment, but essentially, Ross doesn't care. Um, yep, exactly. And Ross is a very, uh, is a very mathematical player. He is a very experienced player as well. So I don't think there will be any mistakes uh, from him in this situation. Jirachi being put even tries to catch up on the resources. He knows that the opponent does not play uh, any hand disruption, but he still respects the idea that something could happen. Yeah, just like it said, uh, you you just. Um... Prove good habits, right? Promoting the Jirachi. Mm -hmm, exactly. Um, something you would do in almost every situation, so why not just do it in every situation right there? If there's... Yeah, but uh, so, yeah. I mean... Yeah, just attach the energy and then... Um... Yep, there's the Aurora energy slowly coming down on that Spirit Tomb. Guarding up that switch, switch. won't need that. Does and... it two switches as well, so yeah. Bunch I'm of thinking if there is any the play that we didn't see, but I don't think there's anything like that. It yeah, has a Fion. So yeah, yeah, overall, ADP Spirit Tomb. Yeah, ADP Spirit Tomb, really strong deck, right? But we saw it, we saw it earlier in the uh, in one of the earlier rounds versus Babel of as well, where the Babel of player was not missing any beats and was just mm -hmm. constantly applying pressure exactly um, from turn three but here we see like sometimes if you uh if the resources don't come uh in the way you sometimes wanted to then it can be really tough to assemble six energy especially if you get money and your energies go to the bottom of your deck and you don't exactly. have a lot of energies left of course there were energies priced um yeah, yes, and good. I think Matthew understood that um, the game is now for Ross Grab. And I think Blasephal overall uh, covers perfectly, the, fits perfectly the concept of Glass Cannon. 
So a deck that is very powerful, can do a lot of damage, uh, and works really well when everything goes right and it's not disrupted. Uh, we saw it right here. Some turns were in, uh, it was some turns ahead, ADP missing the energy attachment on turn one, yeah. but he was not able to capitalize on it. Spiritual is also literally glass cannon because it only has like 120 HP, but up to infinite left. damage. <laughs> um, you can do a lot of damage with it. But yeah, uh, congratulations for Ross. He's doing amazing once again. Yeah, can anybody uh, stop this guy? He's really, really strong, and he's like. He's just cleaning house right now. Super, super impressive. Um, I mean, those those records speak for themselves, right? If you go 10 and 2, or like the last time, um, there's a boss order. So, like, yeah, that's a pretty that's boss win. order, though. That's your win con, I guess. Yeah, just birdie that eventually gets knocked out with the, <laughs> the best people next to another boss order. Yeah, I mean, really if your opponent doesn't have a switch right there, he, or like no switch and no energy. It's like the the zero point five percent play, right? But... Exactly, and we will see here actually this anguish card. Already would have took the knockout, but just to make sure, one ninety. There we go. Actually, you need one more, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, he needed that. No, that's... <laughs> Luckily, I wasn't the one playing. <laughs> he could have just missed Fionn or did anything, but uh, yeah, just do the most damage as possible because it's the most fun, right? So yeah, um, well done here for us. Well done as well to Matthew. Uh, played really well. Uh, ob some things did not go his way. Um, but yeah, well done. And uh, yes, this was round 12. One last round for our players. And then we will know which people will have access to day two. So for anybody that is still playing and is watching us, good luck. And for the people that are just watching and spectating, we'll see you soon for round 15.